Today's lesson, we're going to talk about independent event. Independent event is when the two events are not related. Another word, one event is not getting affected by the other event. In that case, we're going to say is finding the probability of A events and B. And this is going to be shown by the probability of A times the probability of B. So you multiply the event if it's an independent event. Let's look at the example one. It says, suppose we flip a coin and roll the dice and want to know the probability of coins lands on heads and rolling a six on the dice. So as you can see, you have two events happening. Um, the coin lands on head and rolling a six on a dice. So we're going to find out what um, the probability of each and because um, coin landing on head is not going to get affected by rolling a six on the dice or the other way around. We're going to call this is going to be independent event. So we're just going to multiply those two probabilities, right? So this probability right here, coin lands on head, head is going to be one out of two, right? Because when you um, toss the coins, either it could be tails or head, so that's going to be total of two, and getting head, it's going to be one out of that two, right? And rolling six on a dice is going to be one out of six, right? There are six size, six numbers, and you can get six, that's one out of six, right? So when you multiply this to find the probability of head, And 6 is 1 half times 1 over 6, which is going to be 1 over 12. So that's how you're going to find the probability of two events when events are independent events. Example 2 are asking if give, uh, given event is independent. The A, when you're tossing the uh, coin two times, so first event will be when you toss the coin for the first time, getting a head. The second event will be the second time toss, you get head. And because when you're tossing a second time, you will, will not get it back by the first toss. So this is going to be independent event. What about the second one? It's a, hey, you draw a card from a deck and then um, and then draw the second card without replacing the first one. So this is very important. So without replacing, you already have one shorter than when you started for the first time. So second time, you get one card shorter because you're not replacing it back. So obviously this is going to be, so second draw will get it back by the first one, depends on what you get on the first, right? So in that case, we call this is not independent event. What about example three? Example three is asking if Alex drawer, she had 10 pair of socks, six of which is are white, and seven t-shirts, three of which is are white. If she randomly reach in and pulls out a pair of socks and t-shirts, so she pulls socks first, pull socks first, so this is going to be first event, and then uh, pull the t-shirts on the second time, what is the probability that both are white? So, Pulling socks and pulling t-shirts, it's out of different groups. So whatever that I pick on the first, socks will not get it back pulling t-shirts 
on the second time. So that's how we know that's going to be independent event. In order to find the independent event, we're going to find the probability of getting white. So this is going to be uh, getting white, right? That will be the event one. So event one is going to be six over because you have a six white, right? Six over, 10 total uh, pair of socks. And this uh, fraction, you should be able to reduce it, which will give you three over five. And then probability of getting event two. Again, event two is going to be trying to get white t-shirts, right? And that's going to be total of three white out of total seven, right? So it will be three over seven. That fraction cannot be reduced. So probability of event one and event two happen. You could also use the end sign like that. is going to be 3 over 5 times 3 over 7. Because it's independent event, you can just multiply it. And this gives you 9 over 35. Example 4 uh, is asking you roll two dice. Find the probability that the first dice lands on the even numbers and the second dice lands on 5. So this one, I can kind of show you the comparison, how it, easy it is to use the independent event with the formula multiplying. First, actually finding all the outcomes and uh, finding a probability, right? So I'm going to work two ways, and I, of course, it will be easier with the formula, right? So formula will be for independent event, and this is independent event because um, you're rolling a two dice, right? So the whatever the first dice you get will not affect on the second dice. So probability of first die lands on even number will be event one, and second dice land on five will be event two in this problem. So probability of event one is going to be first die lands on the even number is going to be either even or odd, right? When you're rolling a dice, you will either get even and odd. Um, it's going to be, you could say this is going to be um, even numbers will be two, four, and six out of one through six, right? So it will be 3 out of 6, or half will be even number, so you could just say 1 over 2. Either way, right? 3 over 6 will be reduced to 1 over 2. Well, what about uh, probability of getting event 2 then, right? Second dice lands on 5 will be 1 out of 5. I mean, 1 out of 6, right? So if you wanted to find the probability of event one and event two happen is one out of two times one out of six, which is one out of 12, right? So that's what you can do using the formula or the method that we've been doing. Other way of doing this problem is just listing, right? So when you list all this, um, Getting a first, rolling a two dice, um, you can get maybe one, the first die one. And wait, let me erase that and make it a little bit better. First die one, second die one, right? Or first die one, second die is two. Or second die is three, when first is one, right? So when first is one, you can get um, all the way to 6, all the way to 6. Same thing. When second die is 2, I mean, the first die is 2, the second die can be 1, or 2, all the way to 
six. And this repeats. So even the first dice can be three, four, five, and six. And then all the way to the second die can be six, right? So this is the orders you have. This is the, all the outcome you can have. So you realize the total outcome is going to be one through six times one through six. So that's going to be 36 total outcomes, right? So let me write that, your total outcome. will be 36 because it's six times six, right? So out of 36, you wanted to find the first die lands on the even. So first die can be two, four, and six. And second die will be five. So it will be just five. will be these three outcomes. So when you do 3 over 36, this gives you 1 out of 12, which you end up getting the same answer. As you can see, there are more than one way of doing this problem, but obviously this method is simpler than trying to figure out the total outcome of two events and excluding those um, even one and even two happening out of the total outcomes, right? But again, even though it's a little longer, it does not mean you cannot do it, right? So it's up to you, whichever method you want it to use. Let's try one more. It's a, a couple has two children. Find the probability that the both children are girl. So let me do it uh, two method, but this times I will do this way first. Getting a sample event. This one sample event is not going to be that large because having a two children um, is just few outcomes. Having a two children, you could have either boy and boy. Or you could have a boy and girl, or boy girl, but uh, flipping the order, right? Girl first and boy second. Or you could have a girl and girl. So you have a total of four outcomes. Out of this, find the probability that the both children are girl. So this is what you're trying to find. So in that case, it will be one out of four. That will be the probability of both girl, right? Or uh, finding a probability of getting a girl for the first times. So probability of girl and girl, right? Find the probability of getting a girl for the first time is just two options. Either you're going to get girl or boy. So it will be one out of two times. The second time you're getting a girl will be another one out of two. When you multiply it, it will give you one out of four. So it's up to you, again, which method you wanted to use it. Um, you should be able to get the exact same answer as long as you're doing it right.